we often like to compare with others. Even in the matter of sinning, some people know they have sinned before God. But because they think there are others worse than them, they feel their sins are still alright. For example, they know they love the world, but they comfort themselves to say that at least they are unlike others who are greedy. Or they have lustful thoughts, but they think at least they are not as bad as those who got into extramarital affairs. And so they feel their sins are not so serious. All these are dangerous thinking. We must not think that it is alright just because the sins committed are small or trivial. Because sin can multiply easily and swiftly. If sins are not decisively eradicated, even small sins can soon turn into strongholds and completely stumble us. The Bible has often warned us to be mindful not to let trivial problems escalate. Galatians chapter 5 says, A little ease works through the whole batch of dough. Song of Songs talks about little foxes that bring ruin. Catch for us the foxes, the little foxes that ruin the vineyards, our vineyards that are in bloom. These little foxes could be what we see as small sins, such as a white lie, some harmless jokes and so on. However, if we do not deal decisively with small sins, they may lead to serious ruin later. Also, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 says, As dead flies give perfume a bad smell, so a little folly outweighs wisdom and honour. So, a little folly can corrupt and render a good thing useless. And the Bible often associates folly with evil and contempt for God. Lastly, James chapter 2 warns, For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. So, even if a person thinks he is generally good and has only sinned a little, he is still guilty. Thus, we see that the Bible constantly reminds us of the great damage little sins can do to us. To a certain extent, small sins may be more dangerous than big sins. Before we go on, let us first define small. The small here does not refer to a smaller or lighter penalty because all sins, whether big or small, are offensive to God. Even if a person only committed a small sin, he will still face eternal judgment if he does not repent. Just as James chapter 2 tells us that keeping the whole law but breaking only one renders a person guilty as well. Thus, in God's holy and righteous standards, the punishment for big and small sins is the same hell unless a person is cleansed by the blood of Christ. However, the small here refers to sins which are deemed as trivial, unobvious, and not so serious in the eyes of men. But that is only small by human standards, yet what is small to men may not be trivial to God. For example, men often think that disliking someone is a small sin, only murder is a huge sin and that having lustful thoughts is small sin, but only adultery is a big sin, and so on. Yet, God's standards are very different. And sins which are small in men's eyes are more dangerous because they are not easily detected. On the contrary, big sins are obvious. They easily invite the condemnation of people, and their consequences are more direct and severe. Thus, people tend to be more mindful to stay away from big sins. However, small sins feel very normal, such that a person may not even realize that he is sinning. In fact, the best scheme of the devil is to lead someone to hell without any telltale signs at all, making a person unknowingly enslaved by sin. Next, the danger in small sins lies in the fact that they are more easily tolerated. Just now, I mentioned that small sins are not easily detected. But even if found out, small sins are also more easily tolerated by people. So people often ignore small sins, finding excuses for them. For example, if a person blatantly steals, he will be taken to task and charged by the law. But if someone habitually gossips or spreads rumours, people tend not to have much drastic reactions. Yet, precisely because the guilt brought by small sins is very light, people have no qualms about repeating those sins. So we see that people very frequently and mindlessly commit little sins. Thus, small sins can multiply especially fast. Furthermore, what's scary is, small sins actually prime our hearts to commit big sins. Often, 
A scene starts with a little thought, but with one more glance, one more touch, one more moment of lingering, it can quickly escalate to a real sinful action before we know it. And if being ignored, one act can turn into a series of actions, and one time sin can become a habitual one. Satan likes to desensitize us to small sins so as to embolden us to commit big sins. As we keep committing small sins, our spiritual conscience will grow numb and our will to resist sin will become weaker. We will slowly get used to sinning and tolerating those sins, even feeling comfortable to sin without any struggle. Then, one day, when a great temptation comes, we will not be able to withstand it. Small sins not only will cause us to fall big time in future, but they also harm us in the present. Because unresolved sins, no matter how small, will adversely affect our relationship with God and make us lose the heart to pray. Even if we pray, we also cannot get God's answers. As a result, our spirit will grow colder and drier. So, we must not be deceived. There is no such thing as harmless sin. All sins are evil. If we do not deal with even the smallest sin in our lives, we cannot have spiritual growth and breakthrough. A small sin is still a sin that has its consequences. Regardless of the magnitude of sin, the presence of sin means a person has disobeyed God. Every sin is a contempt toward God, and each sin causes a rift between man and God. Thus, if we do not repent from small sins, we cannot really enjoy true peace. The Bible tells us that sins will hinder God from hearing our prayers. Isaiah chapter 59 Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ears too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. And if sins separate us from God, who is the source of blessings, then how can we still be happy? Therefore, we must be sensitive to even the smallest sins in our lives. And once we discover them, we must not leave them alone. Instead, we must do all we can to eradicate them from our lives. In fact, through the Holy Spirit, God has already empowered us to reject sins. May we be willing to cooperate with the Holy Spirit to overcome the big and small sins in our lives.